the OG Pi KVM project. This is the Pi KVM V4 Plus. It's the original remote control your machine from somewhere else over the network. And these are cool. There's a lot of fun stuff. There's a lot of uh, other similar products that have popped up, but the Pi KVM folks are back with another project, which is multi-port. Four inputs, eight inputs, 20 inputs. You can control up to 20 machines, full ATX control with this and the stuff in this box. So 20 ports and you could put them all in different places and a lot of fun stuff. I really want to show you this. It's a multi-port Pi KVM. So here you go, here's one of the boxes. It's four ports, four ports at a time. And you got one, two, three, four on the back. USB and ATX control through that RJ45 connection. On this side, you've got uplink and downlink. So you can daisy chain these together and control up to 20 machines. There's so many goodies in the box, so many cables. There's a power splitter and a power brick and a cable. So much stuff. Okay, fortunately there's a helpful cabling diagram for how you wanna connect all this stuff on the Pi KVM website because you only need one power brick and with the one power brick you can power you know, multiple boxes. But you don't have to. Like this could actually be located somewhere else and you could get by with just a USB and HDMI connection from this to this you know head control unit like where this actually hits the network somewhere else, you see. The network connection and everything else, that still runs on the Pi KVM. This is the brain, this is still doing all the smarts. But all of your individual machines can connect here, which is really useful here because we've got a lot of test benches with a lot of different machines that are configured in various different ways. But sometimes it's useful to just be able to see what's going on at a particular workbench. So I could set up four machines on workbench A, four machines on workbench B, and then tie both of these together and back to our Pi KVM and be able to remotely check on eight different stations one at a time as we're working on this. For the ATX control part of it, you have these little breakout PCBs. The idea with this PCB is that you mount these in an unused expansion slot in your computer and they connect to the motherboard. And so you can remote power on and power off because it will press the, the power button and uh, reset button and you can long press, short press, whatever you need to do. So your front panel connections will actually connect here and then this will actually connect to your motherboard. And they include the cables for you to do that. So this mounts on an expansion bracket like this. And it's a standard ethernet cable, but it's not ethernet. It's an RJ45 connection. And so the RJ45 connection here basically just carries those ATX control signals, basically button presses, back to the RJ45 connection here. And then that gives you full ATX control to be able to remotely power on and power off a computer. To support this, the Pi KVM software has been updated. As we look through that, they've really added a lot of features. So you've got full USB control, you can change the labels on the individual devices, you can do media mounting on all of the devices. Remember, up to 20 machines can be connected in this way, which is pretty awesome. You can also redefine what a short press or a long press is in the context of ATX power. Maybe you get that older server that's a little persnickety and you gotta hold the power button down for like 35 seconds. Yeah, you can do that with this, that's not a problem. And of course this is available with a short bracket as well as a tall bracket, just depending on what your physical needs are for mounting these. If you look closely at these PCBs, they actually have a lot of really cool little features. It's not just the button controls, but you can also do LED input. So you can see the hard drive LED if, if it's on or off. You can see if the power LED is on or off, and you can use that for larger upstream status. Um, a lot of the Pi KVM software has been modified to take better advantage of that, so you can actually push events to third-party systems or monitors. Like, oh, the power button or the power LED on this computer has gone off for some reason. Maybe I should send an alert to somebody. You can script that yourself now with the facilities that are provided in this software, which I've had a lot of fun playing with over the last couple of weeks. We're still working with 1080p, so 1920 by 1200, 1920 by 1080p. Uh, you can do 60 FPS, but you really don't need that for network and remote control. And hardware scalers do work. So if you have a 4K display that you would like to use 
locally, you can take your 4K display and hook it up and then take it into a hardware scaler and then split the hardware scaler so that it's sending a 1080p signal. Now that's not gonna be as sharp if your native signal is 4K, but you can feed that into this and basically just keep an eye on what's going on on your station to be able to you know, do something useful with it. Of course, if you have 20 inputs, you're gonna need 20 scalers. But if you're fine with 1080p or 1920 by 1200, that'll all work natively. Now the Pi KVM thing has two 12 volt power inputs. It's not, real, it's not really meant to have both connected at once just for daisy chaining. So I've got my Y cable here and I will connect that and then connect the other 12 volt power brick to this. And then boom, that's, that's basically all I need to do as far as connections go. Now, if my other four input is gonna be located locally, I can just daisy chain off of this one to that one. And then I've got another four ports that I can connect, assuming that I get all the other HDMI connections good to go. The power is the easiest place to start. Definitely check the wiring diagram. Let's take a closer look at the browser software. The web GUI setup, it couldn't be easier. Actually, you just plug it in and then you've got an extra option at the top. Switch P1.3. I've got both of these units plugged in. And if you forget, you know, what you're doing or how things work with cabling, you can actually hit these these icons here, like the downlink uplink icons, and you get this fancy purple pulsating highlight thing that it does. To help you find the right port. Oh, and for the selected port, it shows you that in LEDs on the device. It's got near instantaneous switching. We can see that host three does actually have a video link that's plugged into my pine boards, raspberry Pi breakout board, which has power over ethernet and an M.2 connected to it. This is the compute module five. So that's going to be a future video if you want to check that out. And then of course you've got ATX controls for reset power, all the stuff, but there's no setup here. I didn't have to do anything from the command line, literally just plug it in and you're good to go. So there you go. That's the Pi KVM multi-port extender. It does what it says, and it does what it says very, very well. It's a very clean, polished software interface, and for a business use case, or even an advanced home lab use case, it would be hard to beat this functionality because, well, it's so easy, especially the daisy chaining functionality. I was surprised how smooth the daisy chaining functionality is on this because you just, it's like, oh, I'm gonna need to connect 20 HDMI devices. And if you're thinking, hey, my stuff has VGA, not to worry, there are VGA to HDMI adapters that are USB powered, and so you do VGA to HDMI and then HDMI into this, that sounds janky, but it actually works really well with a solution like this, as opposed to you know VGA capture, which is basically analog. The, the VGA to HDMI adapter chipsets that are out there work quite well in 2024 and 2025 and, and beyond in, in this day and age versus some of the older ones that you may have experimented with and had worse luck. But VGA to HDMI, fine. Native HDMI is fine. If you're gonna go DisplayPort, DisplayPort to HDMI is a little more challenging. A good display port to HDMI adapter is usually USB powered, not always. And sometimes you can't really go, most of the time you can't really go display port HDMI and then back to display port with another adapter on the other end. So if you do display port to HDMI, make sure you get a good active adapter for maximum signal integrity. But the passive ones, cause it is 1920 by 1080, the passive ones have a pretty good shot at working. So just a regular old DisplayPort HDMI adapter is fine. FreeSync, G-Sync, all that kind of stuff is not a thing, is not applicable in this universe that we're talking about here. But it is nice to be able to see the LED status controls, the level of polish in the software, and everything else. This is a really interesting product. You should check it out. All right, I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. If you want to get up to something crazy with these or there's something I forgot or whatever, hit me up in the forums, all right? I'm signing out, and I'll see you there. <laughs>